Where is all that space junk? There's lots of crap in space, but we never see it. At least not in images of the Earth. So, where is all that space junk? Writing in 2013, NASA reported there was a half a million pieces of space debris floating around Earth. This is a mix of old satellites, rockets, spacecraft, and spacecraft parts. Whenever a spacecraft photographs the entire planet, the image is typically taken from thousands of kilometers away. Space debris aren't visible at this distance. Closer spacecraft also shoot photos of Earth. The International Space Station is around 400 kilometers above the planet, but even at this range, space debris is often minuscule. Much of the debris vary in size, but one of the largest spacecraft near Earth is the ISS. It measures 109 meters at its widest points, while the planet itself is over 12,000 kilometers in diameter, meaning even that is just 0.0008% the size of Earth. So why don't we see space debris in images of Earth? Because the Earth's a planet and space junk is tiny. Earth's a miraculous speck in a vast universe of rocks, light, and gas. UAE-sized hole opens up in Antarctica. Well, here's something you don't see every day. A nation-sized body of water known as a polynia has opened up in Antarctica. Scientists say this is the second year in a row the massive hole has appeared. At 30,000 square miles in size, it is half the size of Florida, around the same size as the UAE, and three times as big as Hawaii. Warming waters from changes in the environment are said to play a part in the formation of such holes, as well as weather factors. Thing is, we wouldn't even know it was there if we didn't have satellites. Thanks, science! The poles may soon switch. Earth's poles could switch, but we don't know when. Earth's magnetic poles switch every few hundred thousand years or so, and we apparently are overdue for another flip soon. Earth's rotation around its planetary core generates a magnetic field around the planet. This field creates two magnetic poles. Unlike the geographical south and north poles which remain affixed, the magnetic poles are constantly shifting. Writing in the publication Conversation, scientists from the University of Leeds say a reversal of the poles could happen in the next 2,000 years. They warn such events are difficult to predict, but speculate such an event could lead to multiple poles and a weakened magnetic field. This could allow more radiation to pass through onto the planet and could also impact the planet's electrical and electronic infrastructure. How do eruptions cool the planet? Did you know a mega-hot eruption can lead to a temporarily cooler planet? The New York Times reports NASA is developing plans to study how eruptions cool the planet. The plan involves sending high-altitude balloons into the air to observe a volcanic eruption event. When sulfur dioxide from an eruption mixes with airborne water vapor, the two create aerosols that reflect sunlight. In 1991, a volcanic eruption in the Philippines sent 20 million tons of sulfur dioxide into the planet's atmosphere. As a result, global temperatures cooled by 1 degree centigrade. Is the ozone layer recovering? NASA announced on Thursday that the hole in the Earth's ozone is the smallest it's been for the last 29 years, though not because toxic emissions have gone down. The ozone hole that formed over Antarctica this year measured 7.6 million square miles at its maximum peak and is as small as it's been since 1988. Ozone molecules shield the Earth from the sun's UV radiation, but are being depleted by man-made chemicals like bromine and chlorine that are released into the atmosphere. The hole in the ozone has been growing larger over the years, measuring more than 11 million square miles at its highest. Ozone deteriorates more quickly in colder temperatures and in the presence of polar stratospheric clouds that encourage ozone-eating chemical reactions. This year's weak depletion is largely due to stormy conditions in the upper atmosphere, which warmed temperatures and kept toxic chemicals from destroying the ozone. While the small ozone hole resulted from mostly natural causes, steady improvements such as the banning of ozone-eating chemicals in a 1987 international treaty may have also contributed.